Good afternoon. So who here in the audience is actually happy to be just sitting down? I know Andrew and Michael are, Edith, yes. For, the, for those of us, of, those of, of us that have been actually working the booths, and for those of you all that have been walking around, it, it, it's a first day to a long three more days to go with it. But uh, I'd like to welcome you guys. Um, I'm with Mercrete. My name is Brett Monty. Um, we've got a booth about 50 yards down to my right here. Um, we're actually today going to be talking about grouting or grout and grouting installation techniques. Um, one of the things that I always start off with is if you've ever dealt with grass, who's grout? Who's my contractors? Anybody in here a contractor? Does grout create some big headaches for you? Yeah, it's, it's, I look at it this way. We as a manufacturer, we manufacture setting materials, we manufacture waterproofing membranes, basically everything that goes underneath the tile. But what is the part or the one concept or one product that we manufacture that the homeowner or the end user actually sees, and that's the grout. And that is actually one of the most important aspects or parts of the tile installation. Meaning that I've seen people spend 30 minutes choosing their tile and four hours choosing their grout color. So grout color, you're shaking your head, grout color is extremely important. So when we're talking about grouts, we're gonna go through this, we're gonna talk about the different types of grouts that there are out in the market, grouts that we have as well. Um, we're gonna do a little demo on a standard traditional type of grout, um, installing it and cleaning it up. But the, the big wow that we're gonna do at the end of this is we're actually gonna do an epoxy grout. Um, epoxy grouts, yes, I, I got a whoa back there. Um, epoxy grouts tend to scare people when they hear epoxy. Epoxy from 13 years ago was a different animal than what it is today, and we'll talk more about that. But one of the things with grout is, especially cementitious grouts, which are your standard grouts, um, they can be very finicky with water. They can be very finicky in the way you clean them up, meaning you could end up with a grout that's shaded. You can end up with a grout that's blotchy. Um, so water content's very important. Um, other types of grouts that are out there, you've got cementitious or your, your normal standard Portland cement-based grouts. You've got um, high-performance grouts, which we've got a grout called Pro Grout, which is gonna be a high-performance grout that is not necessarily made with complete Portland cement. It actually has some other chemicals and products in it that help it in curing, they help it in drying faster, they help it in drying more color consistent. Um, they're really, really neat products. Um, they're what I consider kind of what would be more of a monkey proof type of product. Anybody can use the Pro Grout. They are a little bit more expensive, but they're gonna give you a better value at the end of the job. Um, on the other end of that, when you're moving up in grouts, you've got the epoxies, which if you're familiar with epoxy grouts, epoxy grouts are, in a sense, chemical resistance and stain resistance. Um, and again, we'll talk more about the epoxies. But right now, what you see up here, this is John McIntyre out of Florida. He's our technical rep, and he's up here doing some mixing for me. And what he's mixing is one of our Portland cement-based grouts. This grout that he's actually mixing is called Integra. Um, anybody here ever hear of the Integra grout from Mercury? Basically what this grout is, this is more than just a grout. If you look at the bag, where's the bag at, Brandon? If you look at the bag, it actually says here in small letters, all in one mortar and grout. This is actually a mortar and a grout. So what we use this for is we could be using this with mosaics, any tile under three inches and smaller. Um, in some cases, up to three by sixes, just depends on what it is, but we can use it with glass tiles, metal tiles, river rock, um, split face stones, and it comes in eight colors. So what you would end up doing is you're gonna use this just like a mortar, then you're gonna come back and grout with the exact same thing that you just set it with. So if you've ever set mosaics before, and used a white thin set or a gray mortar thin set behind it, before you grout it, you gotta clean it out to make sure those little peaks aren't poking through your grouts and you get what I call pimples in there. Imagine using a mortar that actually matches your grout. So this is a very highly modified mortar and which in turn would be a highly modified grout. Sounds pretty impressive. What we're gonna be doing here is John's mixing it up. This is, in this application, just a grout. So we're using it in this instance. So we tell a lot of our distributors that it doesn't have to be sold as an all-in-one. It can also be sold as an excellent grout alternative. So when it comes to grout, 
problems that we have out there? I talked about them a few minutes ago when we were talking shady grout, blotchy grout. How do you avoid those things? Can anybody answer that? I follow the directions. That's the most important one right there. Um, he's absolutely right. One of the things I see when I'm out on jobs, and I've been somebody that's done this. My father's a retired tile contractor. He's done this, and I'm sure all of us, if you've seen somebody mixing up grout, they have done this. They take an empty bucket, they take their hose, they put some water in it, they pull the hose out, they take their bag of grout, they pour it in, they mix it up a little bit and go, oh, I need a little more water. Oh, I need a little more little powder. Oh, I need a little more water until they get the consistency that they want. A lot of guys will tell their helpers or whoever's mixing the grout that, you know what, go mix it up to about a mayonnaise or peanut butter consistency, how we all heard that. Those are all wrong. Grout is a very finicky system or a product because it is a pigmented color. And one of the ways I like to explain that is if I took two glasses of coffee, had them both filled up the exact same, and I put a little bit of water in one, and I put a little bit more water in the other, what have I done? I diluted it, I changed the color. Grout's no different. So if I'm mixing up a grout and I'm not measuring the water that goes in it, then I'm, in a sense, diluting the color. You can really see that when you get into darker colors, especially the browns and the blacks. So you can have a large job where you've got four bags of grout that are being used, and you could have four different colors if you're not measuring the grout. What I actually tell my installers is, where's the bigger bucket, Brandon? The bigger mixing bucket, oh, oh this one's fine, is invest in this. It's about $2 at one of the big box stores. And if you're using the same manufacturer's grouts, if it calls for four quarts of water or five, five pints or whatever it may be, you can actually take these buckets, you drill a hole in the side of it, and now you got a monkey bucket. And that's what they're called in the industry. So you can take that and hand it to anybody that's never mixed up grout and say, fill it up till water pours out the side. Take that bucket, pour it in the bucket, throw your bag on top and mix it. So now you've got the same amount of water every single time you mix it. That's a pretty neat little technique and step right there. So I've actually got about four of these buckets in my garage for different manufacturers because they all, each manufacturer might require a little bit different water ratio, but each one has a hole that might be in a little different place and I've labeled the bucket for what manufacturer it is or what grout that it goes with. So it's a really easy way because I get a lot of contractors, oh, I'm not going to measure it. I can measure it with my eyes. I've been doing this for 30 years. Well, typically what I tell people is I put them up to a competition and say, okay, you measure four quarts with your eyes, and I'm going to measure four quarts with a measuring bucket. Normally, I win that bet, but uh, it's one of those things. Water is extremely important. Now, one of the things John's done here that he's mixed it is he's added his water, he threw the bag on top, and he's mixed it. So, what's the most important thing to do? Following directions. Most grouts that are out there, especially standard grouts or Portland cement-based grouts, they require you to let it slake, let walk away. Typically, one of the contractors that I deal with, and it may not be you guys, but I always tell my guys, go call your wife, then your girlfriend, and then your mistress, and then come back and remix it, okay? Walk away for about 10 to 15 minutes, and you're gonna remix it. What that's doing is that's actually allowing the polymers that are in these products to pull in the water. It's allowing the color pigments to pull in the water, and it's also doing what we refer to as a false set. So it's starting to actually set up so then we come back after 10 to 15 minutes and we remix it. When you remix it, you're gonna actually notice that it'll actually be smoother and creamier that second time you mix it without adding water. And the reason that for that is, is because those polymers pulled in that water and so now it's acting as, it went from a dry dispersible polymer to now a wet polymer. So it's a lot smoother and creamier of a mix. If you've ever been grouting, the installers out here, any color grout, have you ever seen where you grout and you see these little red streaks that go through it? That's because it wasn't mixed completely. Those are the pigments, actually. So part of those pigments aren't being mixed. So when you let it slake, let the, the, the water absorb into the pigments and the polymers and the cements and everything else that's inside these bags, and then you go ahead and remix again, and then you go ahead and use it. Now, after remixing, you go ahead and grout. But one of the things I want to actually point out is, if you've noticed, I've said put the bag in or pour the whole bag in, to it, we as manufacturers recommend that you mix up the entire bag all at once, even if you're doing a small job. And here's why. You ever gotten to the bottom of a box of cereal or a bag of chips, and what's at the bottom? All the good stuff, 
okay? Well, when you think of these as a bag of chips, a bag of grout has cement in it, sand in it, polymers in it, color pigments. All these products that are in these bags are of different sizes and aggregates. So when they come out of manufacturing, they're standing up, they fall down, they ride a forklift to a rack, they go onto another forklift, they go onto a truck, they go onto that truck across the United States, wherever it may be going, into a warehouse, then it goes into the back of a guy's pickup truck out to the job. Then he goes, turns it up, cuts the top, and pours out half the bag. Do you think he's getting all the good stuff? No, he's not. Um, you could almost, in some cases, take and slice these bags in half and look at it and see the separation of products that are in there. So if it ever comes down to you want to mix up a partial bag of grout, maybe you're doing a repair, you want to fix an area and leave some with the customer as well, is we actually recommend just taking that bag and rolling it around. You might look a little funny, but basically you roll it around on the floor, end over end, front over or side to side. So that way you're kind of trying to get a dry mix and get everything mixed back in it. So it is very important. So these are just really easy things with standard grouts. Now, John, are you ready? John, you ready? Okay. So. We're going to kind of do the Reader's Digest version here. We're not going to let it slake the full 10 minutes because otherwise we'd all be staring at a bucket of grout. So we're going to go ahead, re-spin it, then we're going to throw it down on and go through the grouting process. Grouting is actually pretty easy. The most important steps to all of this is the mixing part of it and the cleanup part of it. The application is cramming cement, colored cement, into a grout joint. That's, I mean, I think anybody can really do that. So John's got it mixed up here. And again, this is the Integra. This is the all-in-one mortar and grout. All right, you ready, John? Okay, so he's going to grout this up real quick. Now, when you're grouting, everybody should know this. If not, when you're grouting, you're holding your grout float, which is a rubber gum float, at a 45 to the board. John will show you that as he's doing it. And you're going to cross all your grout joints at a 45. So if you're pulling those at a 45 or, or straight across your grout joints, your grout float is actually going to lip into the grout joint and pull the grout right back out of it. So you're not going to get a full joint. So what did John just do here? He actually took a sponge, a damp sponge, and wiped off the surface. Now what that does is a few things. A, typically when we're on a job, we're messy. We're getting a lot of things on it. If this is another business or a job where you have other trades on the job, you got people walking on it. And one of the biggest contaminants in our industry is dust, okay? So we wanna make sure this is clean. The water also, if you notice he used it, it was damp, he didn't fill the grout joints, but the water's not pooled inside the grout joints, so it's not gonna affect it. If you put a lot of water on that and it started to pool inside the grout joints, we could end up with blotchy joints. We're just cleaning the surface off, but the water also works as a lubricant. It helps push the grout around. It helps makes it easier to push and pull where you need it to go. So if you see this, John's basically running at this on a 45. He's putting it into the grout joints. One of the questions I get a lot of times is, how do you know when the grout joint is full? Anybody know? There's, there's a visual way you can tell when the grout joint's full. If you guys can see it right here, oops, and I just kicked up laticrete stuff. If you see that right there, that actually grout joints up like this. So when you force something in, what's the opposite? It's gonna push it right back out. So we know we got a full grout joint. So when it crowns over, we've got a full grout joint. Does anybody know what the industry standards are? So for how much grout joint after mortar or the thickness of the tile, how much grout area should be left? Anybody? No, because some tiles aren't even a quarter inch thick. Thank you for guessing though. Basically what it is, it's half the thickness of the tile should be available for grout. Okay, so what we want is within the industry is if this tile is three eighth inch thick or quarter inch thick tile, we want an eighth inch for quarter inch available for grout. So that way we can get it. One of the other things that we wanted to with those grout joints is before we grout, we want to make sure they're pretty even. We don't want a lot of ups and downs and ups and downs with grouts. When grout dries really fast, it tends to be a little bit lighter than the color it's supposed to be. When it dries nice and slow, it's gonna be truer to the color it's supposed to be. So if you've got a grout joint that has trowel marks going up and down like this, what do you think you're gonna end up with? I could all, I've been to jobs where I can take a trowel and put it right on it and almost guess what size trowel they use for that. So we want that grout joint to be as cleaned out as the best that it can be. So again, that's with a standard grout. Now, talking about a 
our product like the Pro Grout, which is a high performance grout, that doesn't matter because we're able to control that drying with the actual products and the chemicals that are in it. So when you start moving into high performance grouts, albeit they are more expensive, but they're gonna give you more in the application and in the end. All right, so we've got this clean or we've got it grouted. So now here's the trick question. How long do we wait before we clean it? And I'm gonna warn you, you're gonna be wrong. 10 minutes till it hazes. Michael, Andrew, Michael, two minutes. That's Australian two minutes, right? Anybody else? 20 minutes, okay, you're all wrong. Now, the closest was the hazing over. And, and here's why I'm gonna say that was the closest. I've been in this business for 30 years before porcelains really started becoming the thing. And it was always ceramic tiles. Ceramic tiles are not impervious tiles. They're a little bit either semi-vitreous or vitreous tiles. So they're gonna pull in a little bit of moisture. So in the old days when we were taught, when we we're grouting, when it hazes over, it's time to clean. Because we've got some of that moisture in the grout is pulling into the tile, the tile's soaking it in, and it's evaporating through the top. So the 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it hazes over, we're ready to clean. Nowadays, 85% of the floor tiles or tiles being installed nowadays are porcelain tiles. Porcelain tiles are impervious. If, you're not, if you don't know what the definition of impervious is, it is less than 0.05% absorption, meaning it's like glass, okay? It's not gonna absorb it. So it's gonna haze over before the tile's actually ready to clean. This is starting to haze over, and it hasn't even been five minutes. So the theory is, or the answer to this is, so next time you see me ask this question is, when you can touch it firmly and it doesn't transfer to your finger, that's when it's time to clean up. And a lot of people get really scared when they say, what, well, I'm doing a, a very textured tile. Okay, you know what? You might end up with a little bit of a doodle bug or a little white scrubby pad in there to get some of that out of the texture. But why would you want to, at the end of the job, want to have to go back and fix something? I always ask people this. Unless you're going to do more work, who likes going back to a job? Raise your hand, please. So with grout, do it right. That's really what it comes down to. Follow the instructions. Mix it to the accordant or to the ratio of the water that the manufacturer recommends. Let it slake. When it comes time to cleaning it up, you wait that time for it to clean up. I know typically it's at the end of the day where you want to get on it because that way you know at the end of the day when you're done cleaning up that grout, your hand's out, say, write me my check. I'm done. Okay? This is a very important step. So now John's going to clean this. Again, this is a Reader's Digest. We're not going to stand around and wait for this to dry. But John's going to clean it. If you notice what he's doing, he's doing circular motions. He's got what I call a damp, wet sponge. He's taken the sponge and he's squeezed all the water out of it to where it's just damp. If I were to take and put water on this or drip water onto the grout joints, it's going to soak into it, and you're going to now have a grout joint where it's going to pull the pigments out, and you're going to have a, a light spot, a shaded spot. Um, a lot of times, if you use too much water, it could pull efflorescence out. Everybody know what efflorescence are? Okay, if you don't, everybody else, efflorescence? Man, these lights are bright. Um, efflorescence, if you don't know, are basically salts. It's alkalized coming up out of those cements um, and the grouts and everything underneath it. The cement board that this is on top of has efflorescence, the mortar has efflorescence, and the grouts do, or can. One of the things that we manufacture on our standard grout series with the Duracolor is actually a we'll call it a $10 bag of grout that actually resists efflorescence, okay? Um, if you've ever been to a job and you see these white things or you park your car in the garage after the rain and you come out the next day and you see the white around the tires, that's efflorescence, okay? So you don't want that on your grout joints. But John's cleaning this up. If you notice, he's tooling his grout joints, so he's getting them to where they want to be. You don't want to rub them too much. If you get on grout too early, what you could end up with is grout that looks like this, Inside the grout joint, it's not a full grout, which is gonna collect debris when you sweep. But also, too, is if he gets on it too soon, he's gonna pull it out. You can add too much water to it when you're getting on it too soon, and you could end up with a blotchy grout. So, again, when you clean it up, you wanna wait till you can firmly touch it, and it doesn't transfer to your finger. So, any questions on standard grouts and applications? No? Okay. Brandon's gonna come over and help me and do epoxy. Who's scared of epoxy grouts? Why? 
Yeah, absolutely. Let me jump down because I can't hear work diddly. Uh-huh. The half inch. Half, half the thickness of the tile. Yeah, the question was, if you go back to repair a grout joint, um, how much grout do you remove? You want to re remove the minimum half the thickness of the tile that's installed. Now, when you're going back to repair, even if you repair the next day, that grout's not going to match. Just beware. It will be as close as it can be, but we're dealing with weather products that are job site situational. So if you grouted a job on a rainy day and the next day it wasn't raining, guess what? You got different weather conditions within that area that you're doing it. So more than likely it's not going to match, but it'll be darn close to it especially if it's even six months, a year, four, four years down the road, it won't match. Over time, if they don't clean their grout or tile real well, it will, it, it'll all just be gray. If you're doing that, but if you're doing a big area and you're doing sections, you're not doing a patchwork. You know what I mean? Because typically when you're doing big areas, unless it's just a giant room, a lot of times if it's, let's say a home, that you're doing big areas, you'll finish at a um, threshold. Yeah, so, okay. I'm gonna show you guys why not to be as scared of epoxy grouts. When I started in this industry 31 years ago, you used to have to wear a respirator, you'd have gloves to your shoulders, you had to ask anybody and everybody that if you have a, if you have a resin, Allergy, you need to leave the room, house, neighborhood, and country. There's still resins in these products, so I'm going to still ask that. If anybody allergic to resin, don't come up here. Um, but an epoxy is a plastic. This is a three-part epoxy system. It's got a resin, it's got a hardener, and it's got a filler. You're going to see Brandon here mix those together. He's going to do it by hand. But if you notice, he's not wearing a respirator. And we're not going to recommend this, but he's not wearing gloves. Okay. Ten years ago, you had to have gloves on. A lot of times you had to have shoulder gloves, gloves that came up to your shoulders, because if the water splashed on you or your cleanup water, um, you'd end up with a little rash, sometimes a big rash. So what he's doing is he's mixing the resin and the hardener together, and then he's going to add the filler, which is the color. Now, the cool thing about epoxies is, I said earlier, they are chemical resistant. They're stain resistant products, okay? Um, I'm going to give you an example. I have this in my newly remodeled bathroom, downstairs bathroom at my home. Including myself, there's five boys in my house. Okay, does anybody get where I'm going with this? Doesn't matter your age, we all have aiming issues, okay? I could not clean that bathroom for a month and come back and wipe it right off, okay? Go to some of these bathrooms here where they have cementitious grouts around the urinals and toilets and take a look at it and see what they look like, okay? They're never coming clean if the grout's even still there. So, what Brian is doing here, slow speed mixer, he's mixing this. You can mix the epoxies with hand, by hand. You can mix them with a drill. This happens to be a one gallon unit. This will do on a tile. This is a three by six, looks like, or four by six or four by eight. But this will do probably about 60 square feet per gallon. So what he's doing is he's mixing this up. The really cool thing about this is I make bets all the time. Where's my tile contractors? Raise your hand again. We're having a bet here. All right. You, you're it. So we're going to basically take the exact same size room. You're going to have a 12 by 12 tile, 500 square feet. I'm going to have a room 500 square feet. I'm going to give you a standard grout, my Duracolor or Integra, and I'm going to use epoxy. I bet you I will be at the bar drunk before you ever get there. Think you can do it? You want to take me up? No? Damn. Okay, so, and here's how I can do that. We mix this. We measure the water and mixed it. We let it slake for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Are you done mixing? All right. When he's done mixing this, there's no slake period. Goes in the joints immediately. All right? And he's pushing us for time here, Brandon, so make it pretty. Okay, so 
He's mixing this up. He's going to be able to grout and throw it in there. He's going to do the exact same things that John did over on this side. He's going to take a sponge and he's going to wipe it down, make sure it's clean. There's no contaminants on that surface. But also what he's doing is, again, what is water for grout? It's a lubricant. It's going to help it make it easier to push around. Okay, so he's going to take this. He's going to wet the surface. He's going to take the grout. He's going to put it in exactly like John did. Okay? No difference. So it's just grout. All right. Go get her done, Brandon. Okay, so wet the surface. We got our lubricant down. Make sure the tile's clean, no dust debris on top of it. He's putting it down on top of it. If you don't like the color of the grout that you see when you mix it up, that's the color it's gonna be when it dries. A lot of cementitious grouts might be darker when they're wet, but as they cure out and dry, they're gonna turn a little lighter. So this is the color of the grout. Now, you'll see he's putting it into it. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. Our epoxy grout, the pro-epoxy from Mercury, does not dry with a sheen. It actually dries as a matte finish, so it looks like a traditional grout. I know a lot of the older epoxies had a little bit of a sheen because of the resin and harder in that window, and people didn't like that because it looked almost plasticky. These don't. This is actually a matte finish. So he's smearing that into the grout joints. He's going to come across and clean it up. Now, back to the trick questions again. How long do I got to wait before I clean that up? Right away. Exactly. You can get on this immediately. So... You'll see he's kind of going in there, tooling, fixing little spots. Brandon, you don't have to make it perfect. So now he's about to do something that we would never do on standard grouts. He used a lot of water. I don't know if you guys saw when he pulled that little sponge out of that. He didn't even rinse it. He just took the water and put it on top of it. Water is not going to pull out your color pigments because your color pigments are actually the filler, which this filler is actually a fine pin sand with an epoxy coating over, or not epoxy, but a powder coating over the top of it. So this is your pin sand. Now, man, it's getting that white. What'd you do? See all the white stuff on top of it? Anybody know what that is? Man, he even knows the fancy words. Surfactant, it's soap, okay? It's soap. So we put soap in this to actually make it easier to clean up. A lot of manufacturers have done that as well. So with surfactant in it, we can now take that sponge, wipe right across it. One of the problems that epoxies have had in the industry or over the years, some of the older epoxies, is when you clean them up, there's this little oily residue left behind that you might have to go back the next day and use hot water or maybe a dish soap um, to clean it off. Well, this has the dish soap in it, the surfactant. So basically, he's coming across, he's cleaning it, and it's done. We don't have to come back to get that little hazy film off of it. Any questions on the epoxy? Okay, so let's sum this up and finish it up here. Standard grouts, cementitious grouts, really the most important thing with that is you gotta measure your water. You gotta let it slake, and you gotta wait the appropriate amount of time before you clean it up, okay? Follow those steps, follow the manufacturer steps, and you're gonna have a success with those. High performance grouts, the same thing. You wanna watch your, your water, you wanna measure your water, but they're gonna dry a little bit faster, a little truer, in color, they're a little bit more monkey proof, you can mess with them a little bit, and they're not gonna react the same way. It's what I always say is they're not as water sensitive, okay? And then on the back end of that, we've got the epoxies. Now, after seeing this, within 10 minutes, do you guys feel a little bit more comfortable by seeing epoxy? This is what I tell, I'll finish with this. The last thing I tell a lot of my distributors, um, people that have showrooms and they really want to start pushing um, upsells or upgrades for those jobs is I have them put all over their showroom and I've got customers, um, one down in Cincinnati, matter of fact, that actually says, ask me about epoxy grout. They got another sign in there that says, ask me about chemical resistant grout. Ask me about stain proof grout. And what that does is that starts a conversation with a salesperson to the person that's purchasing, let's say it's a homeowner, on that. Who likes to clean grout? Raise your hand. Yeah, I don't see that again. So once again, this is a grout that will not take stains. It is chemical resistance. We use this a lot in dairy farms, bottling factories, where there's a lot of acid in products. So these are really, really neat products. Give epoxy a chance. Epoxy lives matter. All right, that's it. Oh, questions? Yes.
Yeah, if there's, he's asking if there's a plane change where you've got to change a plane um, steps. So wherever there's a change of plane, what we were basically, if you're looking at an inside corner, like a shower floor, inside corner, we're always going to recommend a grout in that. That's actually a TCNA standard or method that they're doing that because you get different types of movements. Um, when I started in the industry 30 years ago, I was actually taught to float showers. If you don't know what that means, we're putting uh, Visqueen up, chicken wire, and we're actually screeding or floating, mud packing the whole wall. Um, back in those days, they were all tied together. It wasn't important. Nowadays, when you have maybe a floated floor and you're using a, a CBU cement board on the walls um, or any of the other foam systems that they have out there, they're different products, so you're going dif to get different expansion contraction to those. So with that different expansion contraction, change of plane, they're going to ask you to put in a color match caulking that goes along the bottom. Poxy, you don't have to do that. No. No, Poxy. Yes, sir. I'm sorry? Reclean it? Like come back the next day and clean it? No, not this one. No, that's done. That's done. 24 hours. Epoxy grout's 24 hours. It does have a chemical reason. Or it, it's a chemical process. So basically what epoxy does is it starts off hard, it gets softer, and then it starts getting hard again. Okay, so there's about a 24-hour period. After 24 hours, that will be hard, extremely hard. You'll pull the tile up and the grout will still be there. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I'm sorry? No, with epoxies, you do not need a grout sealer. Um, standard grouts, it's preference whether you want to use grout sealers or not. With the grouts that we make, um, you can use a grout sealer for those. But epoxies, you do not. Yes, sir. I'm going to go here first. On epoxy? In the shower? 24 hours, as soon as it's dry. Yeah, um, and I know that comes from probably a lot of the premix single components. The urethanes, you might have to wait 72 hours uh, before you can actually add water to them. But with epoxy, 24, once it's dry, water's not going to hurt it. Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a saying here. I do not recommend job site scientists. As manufacturers, we don't like scientists. Okay, so on an epoxy, because it is a resin that's already pre-measured and a hardener that's pre-measured, you have to mix it up all at the same time. And that's, and I'll speak for probably most of the manufacturers, because if you don't get enough hardener in there, you're going to have a gummy grout. Okay, um, then you had another question that was, oh, bucket time. Um, in a room like this, we've probably got about an hour and a half. Hot weather will actually make it set off a little bit faster cooler weather. I've been on jobs where we've taken lunch breaks and actually took the bucket and put it in a cooler of ice, then took it back out and then used it. So you chill it, it'll actually last a little bit longer, but it's about an hour and a half. If you can't get grout out of a bucket in an hour and a half, I'm going to say find a different... Since we're at coverings, I'm going to say start laying carpet. Um, so, anything else? All right, um, we'll be up here for a few minutes cleaning up. Um, I know somebody else is coming, so we got to get out of their way. Uh, but we've got our booth is about 50 yards down the road. Um, actually, come by and see real quick, too, Dustless. We've got this new dust Dustless technology that we've got the patent on it, Dustless Mortars. So please come by, get some more information on that. Really cool product. Thank you.